Welcome back, crime fighters. It's time for another edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted, a very special edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted, the return of John Garlic. <laughs> we missed you yes. for the last couple of weeks, John. I, I've been away. I, I've been down to the school resource officer conference with my school resource officer guys, and uh, it was great fun. And we were, we were in a really, really tough spot to have a conference. It's just one of those places where there's hardly anything to do but go to the conference every day, and then, you know, in the evening, you know, there's a beach and the Gulf, and that's yeah. You know, it must have been hard. It was tough. It was tough. But you know, it is great that we are investing in our school resource officers. I mean, that's a program that we are reminded all too often how important they are. Not only that, I'm glad you brought it up. The the Alabama school resource officer folks are. We also house the National Association of School Resource Officers right here in in Alabama and Hoover. Mm -hmm. So the National School Resource Officers are here. TASRO, the Alabama Association of School Resource Officers, is huge um, and looked at uh, as kind of a leader in in the programs. So both of those are good things to talk about in Alabama as our school resource officer programs. Excellent Absolutely. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's uh, let's take a look at what the uh, the viewers have done this week. There you go. The count they got two this week. We're up to three thousand. 116. Yeah, and you know that can look a little bit disappointing compared to the numbers that we've been getting here in recent weeks, usually getting 8, 9, 10, sometimes more than that in a week. But when we get two, that's just a nice reminder of the fact that we have never gone a week without at least one person being arrested out of the lineup. And when we started this show over 10 years ago, we didn't think that would be the case. Well, and that's right. And, and the other thing to think about, even if there's one or two, that is a citizen that has taken the initiative to say, you know what, I'm tired of the way things are. I'm going to make a stand. I'm going to do the right thing. And I'm going to let somebody know where this person is that's, that's keeping us unsafe. And it's also possibly a little bit of a, a sign of our own success with this show. Since we've had so many people that have been caught here in recent weeks, you get down to, okay, who's going to be on the show this week? And you're looking at people that just are really hard to locate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some of them are very hard to locate. And we, we always need your help to try and find people. So even if you, know, you have just what you think is a little bit of information that mm, you may not think is important, Please just give us, give crime officers a call. Let us know what you know because that may be the missing piece. All right. And we were talking about school resource officers here a few minutes ago. Right now, of course, John, they're not in the schools very much. We, we've got the kids out for summer. Th that means a different set of things that we need to be watching out for. That's right. The kids are out, so a lot of times you have parents that are working, so the kids are home alone and uh, they may be bored and they may be getting themselves in certain kinds of trouble. So you've got to supervise your kids, but also you've got those things that they call attractive nuisances. <laughs> Swimming pools yep. and, and you know, lakes and the parks and stuff. And your kids may be prone to going to those. And, and so you really got to know where your kids are. You've got to be careful. If you own a pool, make sure you have a fence around it. Um, if you're taking your kids to the lake or to the park and there's water around, please make sure you keep an eye on them. Uh, we don't want anything bad to happen. So it's a different kinds of risks in the summer. It, it makes parenting a, a real tough deal because they're off for a while and the parents are working. And everybody, every family faces different challenges. We're, we're not all in the same situations. The thing is just take a few minutes to think about, okay, summer's here, routine is changing. What do I need to make sure I do to take care of my kids. Yeah, and get your kids outside in the sunshine. Get them away from the TV, get them away from the computer screen, get them some books to read, get them outside in the sunshine, and let them enjoy their time. And the worst thing you can do is let the kids sit inside and, and play those silly games all day long, day in and day out. It just rots their brain, rots their brain. And pretty soon they'll be hacking your computer. That's correct. All right. We're going to take a quick break. <laughs> when we come back, we'll have the first half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Congratulations, Sheriff Amerson, John Garlic, and Matthew Wade, my friends, for 10 years of Calhoun County's Most Wanted and over 3,000 arrests. Way to go, guys. Congratulations, Calhoun County's Most Wanted and Crime Stoppers for 10 great years. And thank you to the citizens of Calhoun County for putting 3,000 people behind the bars. Yay! Looking for a new or used vehicle? AOD Federal Credit Union can help. We offer low interest rates and financing terms to work with your budget. We can save you time and money, whether it's at one of our convenient office locations or through one of our participating dealers. Visit an office, call, or head to AODFCU.com to get your best deal now. 
low auto loan rates, always at AOD Federal Credit Union. Certain restrictions may apply to obtain additional details and cost information. Call 1-800-637-0299 or visit AODFCU.com. Federally insured by the NCUA. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved. A crackhead. Drug addict. Alcoholic. Meth freak. A rich. Like me. I once was. Homeless. Broken. Sad. Just lost. But now I am. Sober. Happy. I'm fine. Was blind, but now I see. Every day, shattered lives are restored thanks to the goods you donate to the Salvation Army. Hi, I'm Katina Houston with Family Links, and this is the Parenting Tip of the Week. Summer break, time for vacations, swimming, and cookouts. Family time. Family time, which sometimes equals more sibling interactions, which equals sibling fighting. Sometimes it's more than a parent can stand. So what's a parent who's at their wit's end to do to keep the peace? Take a deep breath and remember that all this arguing is a part of learning how to be a good person. Several studies show that kids develop a strong sense of fairness and empathy based on how parents handle things when fights arise. So first, explain yourself. Walking kids through your sense of logic is not a waste of breath. It's a good way to stimulate their development and understanding of fairness. Second, listen to their feelings. You know you're being fair and deep down kids know it too, but they still have their feelings about it. Encourage them to talk about their feelings and use it as an opportunity to further help them see a sense of logic. Third, bounce it back to them. Let them make some rules. If they disagree with your strategy, asking them what they think would be fair works shockingly well sometimes. Sometimes they come up with a great idea together, but other times they realize that the situation is, in fact, fair exactly the way it is. Fourth, end the conversation. If the bickering and protesting continues even after you've explained and allowed children their say, then give yourself the last word. Sometimes you just have to say, life can be disappointing sometimes and we all hate that. And last, don't expect everyone or sometimes anyone to be happy. With little kids, you're never gonna satisfy everyone. Remember, we aren't given a handbook to parent our children. It's always a work in progress. Just remain encouraged. You're doing a great job. For more parenting tips, contact Family Links at 256-820-5911. And welcome to this week's edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. First up this week, Eric Martin. Mr. Martin, last known to be living in Lincoln, he's wanted for failure to appear on theft of property first. And this is Mondriel Smith. Mr. Smith, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for probation violation on burglary third. And take a look at Cedric Pearson. Mr. Pearson, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for theft of property second. And here is Lester Thompson. Mr. Thompson, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted as a parole violator for unlawful distribution of a controlled substance. And meet Christopher Bailey. Mr. Bailey, last known to be living in Oxford, he's wanted for theft of property first by deception. And here is Dylan Ingram. Mr. Ingram, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for probation revocation on assault second. And meet Byron Bailey. Mr. Bailey, last known to be living in Piedmont, he's wanted for failure to appear for receiving stolen property first and burglary third. And last up for our first half, Gary Parker. Mr. Parker, last known to be living in Piedmont, he's wanted for probation violation on obstruction of justice by giving a false ID. And that's it for the first half of our lineup. Stay tuned for the second half later in the show. All right, we'll have the second half of the lineup in just a few minutes, but right now, Amanda Watson is joining us from Bradford Health Services. Amanda, good to see you. Oh, it's great to see you. Thank you for having me. And uh, you at Bradford, John, of course, extremely familiar with the work that you do. Yes. Um, I imagine you two work together on a lot of things, but for the people who are watching that don't know about Bradford, what is Bradford Health Services? Um, Bradford Health Services, we focus on um, what we are experts in is um, substance abuse treatment, um, also education, um, community involvement. I'm actually the community rep for Bradford, and um, I also am a social worker, so I just want to help people. But um, my role is to um, get information out about Bradford and the services that we provide. We actually have a lot of free services that we provide, so. Um, I, I'd like people to know about that. And Amanda's here, she, she also does a lot of work with Veterans Court mm -hmm. that's going on. Somewhere. And Juvenile Drug Court. Okay. Um, every Tuesday I attend that. Um, I serve as, as, I guess you could say, a consultant 
Um, we also do consultations with some of the juveniles that come through there and see if potentially they have a substance abuse issue, and if they do, then we address it. All right, now on substance abuse, one time at camp I snorted a, a packet of sweet and low. Would that be something I needed to come to Bradford for? How old were you? <laughs> yeah, I was like 14 or 15. That explains <laughs> so much. It does, much. actually. It does. Wow. Yeah. Another piece. I'm trying to make it lighthearted, but yeah, this obviously yeah. is a very serious issue. It's that, very that serious. Actually, at that very same camp, there was somebody that I worked with at that camp, a, a co-counselor, that later on in life, I, I, I didn't touch base with her for about 15 years. All of a sudden, she's in town in a treatment center, and she, apparently she'd been back and forth, back and forth in treatment centers and such with some addictions to, to painkillers. Mm -hmm. Finally, she is now gotten her life straight for the last couple of years. She's been clean. She's engaged, going to be married in about a what month. What a wonderful testimony. And yeah, she's, she's got a great job. She's spending time with her son again, and, and things are going great. And isn't it awesome to see stories like that? You it's must see them on a regular basis. We do see it on a regular basis. That's what um, drives me to do what I do and drives a lot of, you know, Bradford's employees to do what they do and, and just getting to help people. Um, even when we're not able to necessarily help one individual, we plant a seed. Um, whether it be eventually they'll either say I do need treatment or even with their families we plant a seed we work with their families closely and we say you know this is our recommendation and, and if you can you know find some way to support them getting treatment instead of being codependent or enabling them to keep using then then you know come see us it, it has to get extremely frustrating for the family and friends when they see somebody that they love get into that cycle and and you do so much to help them mm -hmm. you you do everything you possibly can you actually do everything for them and <laughs> then they fall back off again mm -hmm. and it just repeats and repeats and repeats and eventually you wonder should i just wash my hands move away how do you handle something like that from uh, a family most, standpoint most important thing is um for the family like on monday nights we provide a free support meeting for families um, or loved ones of addicts. They don't have to be a patient at Bradford. Um, we offer that Mondays at 5.30, and it really teaches them proper ways of, number one, taking care of themselves. A lot of times they spend so much energy, and that's really what the codependency is, where they spend so much energy trying to take care of or worry about or babysit their loved one that's an addict that they're neglecting themselves. And so it's really important that they take care of themselves so that they can better support the patient taking care of themselves. So that's really what we encourage um, each family to do. We encourage the family, even if the patient does decide to get treatment, we encourage them to be a part of that. Uh, typically the family is as sick, if not sicker than the addict. And um, that's really hard for them to, to accept. Um, they want to you know, control the addiction. They want to um, try to cure the addiction. And one thing that's really important for families to realize is that sometimes relapse is part of recovery. That, and that doesn't mean don't have any faith or hope in treatment, but it's a very difficult disease to treat. It's kind of like learning in school, you know, you may not get it on the first test. That's right. But you keep working at it. That's why I say this planting those seeds, is, you know, statistically, sometimes it takes people on average three times in treatment for it to actually stick. Because um, sometimes they're not getting treatment for the right reason. They're doing it because they were legally mandated or they were doing it because you know, their family wants them to. When they finally do it for themselves because they just really cannot live the way that they have been living one day longer, then it, it seems to stick. You know, consequences have a pretty good impact on, on people um, deciding to, to make a change. Well, people don't change until they're tired of the way things are. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. We can't just tell them it's time to do it. They've got to do it themselves. That's so, correct. Uh, with Bradford, are you dealing with people who say, okay, I've got a problem, I'm going to go to Bradford, or people who say that the court has told them they need to go here, or is it a combination of both? A little bit of both. Of both. Um, basically, we provide a free service where we um, offer free consultations to kind of see what level of care someone may need. Um, we do those consultations in our office, and sometimes it's um, a loved one that has called and made an appointment or just called and asked questions, and we get some information and set up an appointment. Um, sometimes um, we have what's called our emergency consultation service, and that's where we get a phone call from either a physician, nurse, um, sometimes attorneys, um, let's see, we're all, um, sometimes, a lot of times we go in the jail and do consultations mm -hmm. and just see what level of care they need, make that recommendation, and then go from there. Sometimes they're not eligible for Bradford, whereas they um, need 
more than what we offer, where say they have a um, dual diagnosis and they have a lot of really you know, severe behavioral issues um, and they're not stable, well then we may refer them um, somewhere else that they can take care of substance abuse and it could even be like an eating disorder. So we will still refer them to the appropriate care that they need um, or even if they need substance abuse treatment, but for whatever reason they don't have the resources, whether it be you know financial, um, typically that would be the reason. We also help them navigate getting treatment with whatever is available. We can do state assessments and expedite the whole um, you know transition into a state funded facility. So we assist with all of that regardless of what um, resources they have available to them. All right. Well, we need to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about what people should be looking out for inside their own home and what they can do in their home hopefully before things get to the point where they need the professional services. We will be back with the second half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Congratulations on Calhoun County Most Wanted and Crime Stoppers for 10 years on the air and 3,000 arrests. Congratulations to Calhoun County's Most Wanted, 10 years on the air, and the Crime Stoppers for their 3,000 arrests. Great job, guys. Keep up the good work. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a crackhead, drug addict, alcoholic, meth freak, a wretch like me. I once was homeless, broken, sad, just lost. But now I am sober, happy. I'm fine. Was blind, but now I see. Every day, shattered lives are restored thanks to the goods you donate to the Salvation Army. Looking for a new or used vehicle? AOD Federal Credit Union can help. We offer low interest rates and financing terms to work with your budget. We can save you time and money, whether it's at one of our convenient office locations or through one of our participating dealers. Visit an office, call, or head to AODFCU.com to get your best deal now. Low auto loan rates, always at AOD Federal Credit Union. Certain restrictions may apply to obtain additional details and cost information. Call 1-800-637-0299 or visit AODFCU.com. Federally insured by the NCUA. And welcome to the second half of our lineup. First up this half, Robinson Russell. Mr. Russell, last known to be living in Jacksonville. He's wanted for bond revocation on possession and receipt of a controlled substance and possession of marijuana first. And here is Yolanda Thomas. Miss Thomas, last known to be living in Mumford. She's wanted for probation revocation on false reporting to law enforcement. And take a look at Matthew Burnett. Mr. Burnett, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted for failure to pay child support. The face of a deadbeat dad. And meet Danielle Clark. Miss Clark, last known to be living in Jacksonville. She's wanted for failure to pay child support. The face of a deadbeat mom. And here is Kimberly Trammell. Miss Trammell, last known to be living in Anniston. She's wanted for domestic violence, third harassment. And meet Victor Zimmerman. Mr. Zimmerman, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted for failure to pay child support. Another deadbeat dad. And last up in our lineup this week, Keith Hollis Jr. Mr. Hollis, last known to be living in Coleman. He's wanted for failure to pay child support. We end with the face of a deadbeat dad. And that's our lineup for this week. If you have any information on these folks, please give us a call at Crime Stoppers 238-1414. The Crime Stoppers segment of the show coming up in just a few minutes. Also, we'll have our crazy criminal of the week but right now Amanda Watson from Bradford Health Services is joining us and we've been talking about the services that you offer at Bradford they're helping people deal with their substance abuse issues mm -hmm. let's try to head things off at the past before it gets to that point what should people be watching for and I started to say parents but really mm -hmm. it's not just parents you need to be looking for your spouse and everybody else oh, and definitely. the family what should we be watching for to see if there might be a problem I first want to kind of focus on, you know, Bradford, we also work with adolescents, which is few and far between with treatment facilities. Adolescents, you know, are difficult, but um, a lot of times that's where it starts. Um, if a adolescent is using, a teen is using, then um, typically it's a symptom of a deeper family issue is what we see a lot of. Um, there may be a divorce going on. There may be substance abuse issues with the parents. If a parent has, uh, has a substance abuse issue, their child is, uh, you know, predisposed. They have a 60%, they're 60% more likely to have a substance abuse issue if their parent has one. Those are really, really, really high 
um, you know, odds, basically. And John, a great incentive for adults to try to deal with their issues before their kids right. see them right. and are affected by them. Absolutely. Be responsible adults. Be responsible parents. Mm -hmm. Have mm -hmm. kids. You know, it's time to grow up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. Kids are hard. So what are some of the things to look out for in the home? Um, looking out for in the home, a lot of times it's really someone's behavior and their appearance. If you notice that a person, whether they be adolescent, adult, has an extreme change in their appearance, so whether dramatic weight loss, dramatic weight gain. Um, with opiates, we see a lot of, if their pupils never enlarge, if they stay really tiny, no matter how dark, dark the room they're in, there's probably an opiate involved, Lortab, Oxycontin, heroin, um, heroin's back on the rise. So, um, and they're That's younger scary. and younger, um, you know, IV use, we're seeing it in high school. Um, so it's extremely scary, um, but a lot of just isolation. Isolation is a, is a, a, a sign that there's something going on. Um, but unaccounted for time. Doesn't every teenager do some isolation? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we've got a 13-year-old in the house. He loves to just stay in his bedroom. Should I be worried about that? I mean, if you are worried, then I think that that's normal as a parent. But if you really are questioning, typically our instinct is is correct. We know if something's off with our kid. We know if something's off with a family member. We know sometimes we want to deny it. As long as we're it. honest with ourselves. Yeah, as long right. as we're all honest with ourselves. We know if there's something off. And, you know, if you're questioning something, they do sell, um, you know, drug tests in drug stores. I mean, and you can see, is there something going on? What we see a lot of, the second most used drug right now is actually the um, synthetic marijuana spice. And that's in adolescence. That's the second most used drug, which is, you know, causing brain damage in these kids. I think the, the, the most angry I ever got at my parents when I was growing up was they thought that I was smoking pot. I've never done drugs my entire life other than when I was at a Pink Floyd concert and if you breathed, you were breathing it in. It was second hand. <laughs> but it, it made me so angry mm -hmm. that, that they were investigating me. Even more suspicious. Mm -hmm. As I get older, I'm thinking, you know what, yeah, I was angry at the time. But I'm glad that they cared enough to check and that's into it. it. It's about being involved. Earlier, John was talking about you know supervision. It's about being involved. It's knowing who your kids are hanging out with. It's knowing their parents. That's really important. I mean, there's been recent stories. I'm sure you all see it in the news where parents are having these house parties, and they're providing the alcohol, and they think it's fine because as long as it's happened under their roof, it's okay. Well, I'll be honest with you. If my kid was involved in that, yeah. I'd be very upset with that other. That parent. was happening in the condo above us in Panama City. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the police it got called on that one. Um, there's also something, this is another thing for parents really to be aware of with adolescents. Um, kids are having what, what's called skittle parties and they literally are raiding their parents, grandparents, um, drug cabinets. And a lot of times you have a procedure done, they you know, prescribe a 30 day you know, um, um, dosage of Lortab and you only need it for two days. Well, you've got them kind of stockpiled and in your medicine cabinet not thinking anything about it and you've forgotten about them. Well, you know, these kids are pretty resourceful. They go in, they take whatever their parent has and they were grandpa, you know, they're going and visiting grandma, like, hey grandma, let me go to the bathroom, grabbing stuff. And they go to these parties and literally everybody puts their different pills into a bowl and you take a handful and that's it. And it's extremely dangerous. People are dying, kids are dying, adults do it as well. I mean, they're dying from wow. this. They're mixing it with alcohol. They don't even know what it is that they're mixing together that could have an adverse effect. Um, so it's a very, very scary. So I, I say again, it's important to know who are your kids hanging out with, who you know, are their parents, um, and checking up on them. I'm like you. I'm so glad my parents were what I viewed as strict back in the day um, because they definitely helped me because someone's going to teach your kids about drugs. Would you rather it be you or someone you don't know? Uh, we've still got a lot of stuff we haven't talked about, but we're yeah. running out of time. Okay. The good news is people can call and talk yes. to you and, and yes. get some free information from you and find out where things stand. Yes, yes. Um, we have an office actually in Jacksonville. A lot of people think that we're only in Birmingham, but we have an outpatient office in Jacksonville. That number is 256-237-4209. Um, um, we take calls 24 hours a day. We can do emergency consultation service where we can do a consult on site, whether it be in the jail, um, the hospital, um, in any type of business. We can help um, get people these services, even if they just have questions. It's what we do. It's one thing we specialized in for over 30 years. Awesome. We're the largest provider in the Southeast. There's a reason for that. Bradford's very good at what we do. Uh, we provide quality treatment at an affordable price. Um, you know. We work with people. We want to see them get help. We want their families to get help, and we want to see that that happens. All right. Well, if you think you might need some questions answered, give Amanda a call. 
Thank you very much for being on the show with Thank us. Thank you for having me. And we will be right back with our crazy criminal of the week and the Crime Stoppers segment. Congratulations to Calhoun County's Crime Stoppers and the most wanted program that airs on the TV all the time and for being on the air for 10 years and also for arresting over 3,000 people. Great job, guys. Looking for a new or used vehicle? AOD Federal Credit Union can help. We offer low interest rates and financing terms to work with your budget. We can save you time and money, whether it's at one of our convenient office locations or through one of our participating dealers. Visit an office, call, or head to AODFCU.com to get your best deal now. Low auto loan rates, always at AOD Federal Credit Union. Certain restrictions may apply to obtain additional details and cost information. Call 1-800-637-0299 or visit AODFCU.com. Federally insured by the NCUA. And welcome to the Crime Stoppers portion of our show where we ask you to put on your deer stalkers and help our investigators with these cases. First up on your caseload this week, on June 9th, a red 1999 Kawasaki ATV was stolen from this residence on Antioch Road in Anniston. And on June 11th, a white 2011 Kia Soul was broken into. The vehicle was parked at White Plains First Baptist Church on White Plains Road in Anniston backpack and computer tablet were stolen from that vehicle. And sometime between June 12th and June 13th, the storage building located on Highway 78 in Anniston was broken into. Damage was caused to two motorcycles that were stored inside that building. And sometime between June 13th and June 15th, the double hunting tree stand, a red tractor, rock rake, and red tractor scraper blade were stolen from a hunting club located on Rocky Hollow Road in Piedmont. And between June 14th and June 15th, a suspect or suspects cut the tires on two trucks and a utility trailer that were parked at a residence on Linwood Lane in Alexandria. And last up on your caseload this week, on June 13th, a suspect or suspects broke into the public library in Hobson City. Damage was caused to the building, but nothing has been reported stolen at this time. If you have any information on these cases, please give us a call at Crime Stoppers, 238-1414. Remember, we want your information and not your name. Stupid! You're so stupid! The Crazy Criminal of the Week is sponsored by Systems by Design. Simply Smart Security. Find out how they can protect your home or business at systemsbydesign.org. All right, congratulations to Alfred Shropshire III, 49-year-old man who was uh, recently named the Salesperson of the Month at the Mazda dealership where he works. Yay, for him. Congratulations. Yeah. They gave him a nice plaque, yeah. and uh, for some reason he took it with him when he burglarized someone's home <laughs> <laughs> and left it <laughs> in the home. <laughs> So the homeowner comes home, <laughs> the TV's gone, <laughs> all this other electronic stuff is gone, but here's this nice plaque for salesperson of the month from the Mazda dealership down the road. It wasn't too hard to figure that one out. <laughs> that, you know, I, I almost hope that they went down to the Mazda dealership and pretended to need a car and spent a lot of time test driving them and going like, so where's my TV? <laughs> By the way, this, this man was already being monitored by the local authorities, so <laughs> he had to know that they were going to know where he'd been. <laughs> but my thought here is, all the other salespeople at that Mazda dealership, if they lost to him, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you might want to find another line of work, okay? Wow. You are not the greatest salesperson in the world. <laughs> well, Mazda's, I mean, after all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never buy another one. Ooh. We're not going to get into that. Okay. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, let's, not, let's not do that. That's going to wrap up this week's <laughs> episode of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. We'll be looking for you again next week, but hopefully not in the lineup or in a Mazda. In a Mazda. Calhoun County's Most Wanted. <laughs>